Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today's topic of discussion is the analysis of delta configurations in three-phase AC circuits. Our objective is to examine the electrical properties of balanced and unbalanced delta configured loads in three-phase AC circuits. This lecture operates under the presumption the viewer has some familiarity with three-phase AC and why configured loads, as illustrated in the introduction of three-phase AC, and balanced and unbalanced Y configurations lectures, all available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet, only dim and recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. It's perhaps worth a moment of our time to review some general tactics for three-phase AC circuit analysis scenarios before we begin our discussion of delta configured loads. Prior to beginning any three-phase AC circuit analysis, balanced or unbalanced, Y or delta configured, I typically ask myself a series of simple questions, starting with, what voltage does a load in a particular system see? Does the load see the line to neutral differential, the line to line differential, or some other voltage that may be the result of a balanced or unbalanced condition? After satisfying this first question, I then ask myself the simple follow-up. What current does a load in this particular system experience? Does a particular load experience the line current, or does it experience only a portion of line current? The answers to these two simple questions are of tremendous benefit to any three-phase AC circuit analysis scenario. Once these initial questions are answered, the active analysis is merely the application of single-phase AC circuit analysis principles like Ohm's Law and the power equations, techniques you've had ample exposure with by now. As we learned in the aforementioned lectures, even unbalanced three-wire Y configurations can be handled with little difficulty using the superposition theorem. Delta configurations, the topic of this particular lecture, might look confusing at first. However, if you're capable of maintaining a level of organization and making use of visualization skills, they're relatively straightforward, even in the unbalanced state. Consider a 60 Hz three-phase AC system with the following values. Between L1 and neutral N terminal, there is a differential of 120 volts at an angle of zero degrees. Similarly, between L1 and the neutral terminal, there's a differential of 120 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees, and finally, between L3 and the neutral terminal, there's a differential of 120 volts at an angle of 120 degrees. The line-to-line -line differentials necessitate some minor calculations. Using phasors, L1 minus L2 is 208 volts at an angle of 30 degrees. L2 with respect to L3 is 208 volts at an angle of negative 90 degrees. And L3 with respect to L1 is 208 volts at an angle of 150 degrees. If we didn't like phasors and wanted to use a shortcut, we could say that each line-to-line -line differential is square root 3, or roughly 1.73 times larger, and offset by 30 degrees from the nearest line-to-neutral differential. Either method, phasor math, or the shortcut yields the same result. We can center these resultant phasors on the origin of our phasor diagram. Note both the line-to-neutral and the line-to-line -line differentials each exhibit a relative phase shift of 120 degrees from each other. 120 degrees separates L1 from L2, L2 from L3, and L3 from L1. Similarly, a relative 120 degrees separates L1 with respect to L2 from L2 with respect to L3, L2 with respect to L3 from L3 with respect to L1, and L3 with respect to L1 from L1 with respect to L2. This phasor diagram assumes L1 is our reference at zero degrees. If we wanted to, we could also reference this whole system with respect to the line-to-line -line differentials. Assuming we choose L1, L2 as our reference, L1, L2 would be 208 volts at an angle of zero degrees. L2, L3 is 208 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees, and L3, L1 is 208 volts at an angle of 120 degrees. Given L1, L2 is now assumed to be our reference, L1 is 120 volts at an angle of negative 30 degrees. L2 is 120 volts at an angle of negative 150 degrees, and L3 is 120 volts at an angle of 90 degrees. You need to be aware that the phasor diagram on the right is identical to the one on the left, only it's been shifted 30 degrees clockwise, or negative 30 degrees, to account for L1, L2 being employed as the reference. Similarly, the phasor diagram on the left is identical to the one on the right, only it's been shifted 30 degrees counterclockwise, or positive 30 degrees to account for L1 being employed as the reference. Either phasor diagram is correct as long as the user is aware of which reference is being employed, the line to neutral or the line to line differentials. More to the point, you should realize that this is in effect a dual voltage three phase AC system. 
load elements using the line to neutral connections would experience the smaller 120 volt line to neutral differential, whereas load elements using the line to line connections would experience the larger 208 volt line to line differential. Let's examine how delta configurations interact with this system. You'll recall that a delta configuration is a continuous loop arrangement of three load impedances forming the shape of a triangle. In this general use diagram, impedance element ZAB goes from node A to node B. Impedance element ZBC goes from node B to C, and impedance element ZCA goes from node C to node A. Delta configurations are admittedly a little confusing, and to lessen the confusion, I encourage you to just pick a direction and stick with it. In this case, I go from A to B, B to C, and C back to A. This diagram should make a very important fact quite clear. Delta configurations make use of the larger line-to-line -line voltage differential from node to node and do not make use of the neutral connection. Allow me a moment to expound upon this important observation for those that are immediately seeing this. For convenience sake, let's assume the line-to-line -line differential L1, L2 is our reference. Between lines L1 and L2, connected to nodes A and B, there is a differential of 208 volts at an angle of 0 degrees. Load impedance ZAB goes from node A to node B. It makes sense that the voltage across load impedance ZAB is 208 volts at an angle of 0 degrees. Similarly, between lines L2 and L3, connected to nodes B and C, there is a differential of 208 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees. Load impedance ZBC goes from node B to node C. It makes sense that the voltage across load impedance ZBC is 208 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees. Finally, between lines L3 and L1 connected to nodes C and A, there is a differential of 208 volts at an angle of 120 degrees. Load impedance ZCA goes from node C to node A. It makes sense that the voltage across load impedance ZCA is 208 volts at an angle of 120 degrees. Again, load impedances and delta configurations experience the line-to-line -line differential. This is in contrast to our previous observations regarding Y configurations, in which elements in a four-wire Y configuration experience the line-to-neutral differential. We examined balanced and unbalanced four- and three-wire Y configurations in the aforementioned lectures. Let's now talk about current flow through delta configurations. Whereas voltage is pretty easy to describe using point-to-point -point differentials, Current flow through delta configurations takes a little bit more forethought and planning. So don't lose ourselves in the forest. Let's leave a trail of breadcrumbs so we can find our way back by incorporating some ammeters in the following fashion. Ammeter 1 measures line 1 current from the three phase AC source to node A. Assume direction of travel is left to right. Ammeter 2 measures line 2 current from the three phase AC source to node B. Assume direction of travel is left to right. Finally, ammeter 3 measures line 3 current from the three phase AC source to node C. Assume direction of travel is left to right. Three additional ammeters internal to our delta configuration are used to measure current through the load impedances. Again, just pick a direction and go with it. A to B, B to C, C back to A. Ammeter AB measures current through impedance element ZAB. Assume direction of travel is A to B. Similarly, ammeter BC measures current through impedance element ZBC. Assume direction of travel is B to C. Finally, ammeter CA measures current through impedance element ZCA. Assume direction of travel is C to A. Given these assumed directions of travel for line currents and load currents, let's apply Kirchhoff's current law to each of the nodes forming the delta configuration. Consider node A. Both I1 and ICA are incoming current paths, whereas IAB is an outgoing current path. An application of Kirchhoff's current law demonstrates that I1 equals IAB minus ICA. Similarly, consider node B. Both I2 and IAB are incoming current paths, whereas IBC is an outgoing current path. An application of Kirchhoff's current law demonstrates that I2 equals IBC minus IAB. Finally, consider node C. Both I3 and IBC are considered incoming current paths whereas ICA is an outgoing current path. An application of Kirchhoff's current law demonstrates that I3 equals ICA minus IBC. Consider this larger picture. Current IAB travels through the ammeter on line 1, left to right, into node A, through load impedance ZAB from A to B, out of node B, 
and through the ammeter on line 2, right to left. Similarly, current IBC travels through the ammeter on line 2, left to right, into node B, through load impedance ZBC from B to C, out of node C, and through the ammeter on line 3, right to left. Finally, current ICA travels through the ammeter on line 3, left to right, into node C, through load impedance ZCA from C to A, out of node A, and through the ammeter on line 1, right to left. The important takeaway being that unlike our previous observations of Y configurations, line current does not equal load current for delta configurations. Line current for delta configurations is in effect the combination of two currents exhibiting a relative phase shift between each other. Despite the subtractive nature of the Kirchhoff's current law equations for each node, line current for delta configurations is always greater than load current and will exhibit a phase shifted offset. Let's review the important takeaways regarding voltage and current in delta configurations. With respect to voltage distribution, load impedances in delta configurations experience the larger line-to-line -line voltage. With respect to current flow, line current is greater than load current and will exhibit a phase-shifted offset. Let's try an illustrated example of a delta-configured load. Consider a 208-volt 60Hz three-phase AC system, where load impedance ZAB between node A and B has a magnitude of 400 ohms at an angle of 20 degrees. Similarly, load impedance ZBC between nodes B and C also has a magnitude of 400 ohms at an angle of 20 degrees. Finally, load impedance ZCA between nodes C and A also has a magnitude of 400 ohms at an angle of 20 degrees. This is the definition of a balanced delta configured load. All impedances constituting the delta configuration legs have not only the same magnitude, but also the same angle. The line-to-line -line differential from A to B is 208 volts at an angle of zero. Load impedance ZAB goes from node A to node B. The voltage across load impedance ZAB is 208 volts at an angle of zero degrees. Similarly, the line-to-line -line differential from B to C is 208 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees. Load impedance ZBC goes from node B to node C. Therefore, the voltage across load impedance ZBC is 208 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees. Finally, the line-to-line -line differential from C to A is 208 volts at an angle of 120 degrees. Load impedance ZCA goes from node C to node A. The voltage across load impedance ZCA is therefore 208 volts at an angle of 120 degrees. Before we continue with this analysis, allow me to make this bold prediction about this balanced delta configured circuit. Given each leg of the delta is identical, and each impedance experiences the same voltage magnitude, my understanding of Ohm's law tells me that each load impedance will experience the same current magnitude, relative phase shift, and apparent real and reactive power. Let's see how well these predictions hold up to analysis. An application of Ohm's law for load impedance ZAB demonstrates current through it will be 520 milliampers at an angle of negative 20 degrees. A phasor diagram illustrates current lags voltage by a relative 20 degrees. Application of the AC power formula demonstrates load impedance ZAB experiences 108.2 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 101.6 watts is directed towards real power, and approximately 37 bars is directed towards a reactive interchange. Similarly, an application of Ohm's law for load impedance ZBC demonstrates current through it will be 520 milliampers at an angle of negative 140 degrees. The phasor diagram illustrates current lags voltage by a relative 20 degrees. Current magnitude through load impedance ZBC has the same magnitude and relative phase shift as current through the load impedance ZAB. This is to be expected for a balanced delta configuration. Using only the relative phase shift, an application of the AC power formula demonstrates load impedance ZBC also experiences 108.2 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 101.6 watts is directed towards real power and approximately 37 bars is directed towards a reactive interchange. Load impedance ZBC experiences the same amount of apparent, real, and reactive power as load impedance ZAB. This is again to be expected for a balanced delta configuration. If you haven't figured it out yet, balanced delta configurations allow us to save time because each leg of the delta is identical. I hereby predict, no calculations required, that current through load impedance ZCA will also have a magnitude of 520 milliampers and lag the voltage across it by a relative 20 degrees. This implies I3 equals 520 milliampers at 120 minus 20 or 100 degrees. 
I also predict load impedance ZCA will also experience 108.2 volt amperes of apparent power of which 101.6 watts is directed towards real power and 37 bars is directed towards a reactive interchange. Calculations support these predictions. An application of Ohm's law for load impedance ZCA demonstrates current through it will be 520 milliamperes at an angle of 100 degrees. The phasor diagram illustrates current lags voltage across it by a relative 20 degrees. Using the relative phase shift, application of the AC power formula demonstrates load impedance ZCA experiences 108.2 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 101.6 watts is directed towards real power and approximately 37 bars is directed towards a reactive interchange. Let's now examine line current. Whereas load current for delta configurations is a simple Ohm's law calculation for a single current path with a defined point-to-point -point voltage differential, line currents are the summation of incoming and outgoing current paths exhibiting a relative phase shift between each other. Given the degree of phase shift, we might expect our result in line current magnitude to be greater than our previously calculated load currents and exhibit a phase shifted offset. Let's see if this is the case. If we incorporated ammeters in our circuit in the following fashion, Current IAB travels through the ammeter on line 1 left to right, into node A, through load impedance ZAB from A to B, out of node B, and through the ammeter on line 2 right to left. Similarly, current IBC travels through the ammeter on line 2 left to right, into node B, through load impedance ZBC from B to C, out of node C, and through the ammeter on line 3 right to left. Finally, current ICA travels through the ammeter on line 3 left to right, into node C, through load impedance ZCA from C to A, out of node A, and through the ammeter on line 1 right to left. Given these assumed directions of travel, it can be said current in line 1 equals IAB minus ICA. Current in line 2 equals IBC minus IAB. And finally, current in line 1 equals ICA minus IBC. Substituting in our previously calculated values yields I1 to be 900.7 milliampers at an angle of negative 50 degrees. I2 is also 900.7 milliamperes, only it exhibits a negative 170 degree phase shift. Finally, I3 is also 900.7 milliamperes, only it exhibits a 70 degree phase shift. You'll note each line current magnitude is the same and exhibits a relative 120 degree phase shift with respect to the other line currents. Additionally, you know each line current magnitude is square root 3, or approximately 1.73 times the nearest load current magnitude, and exhibits a 30 degree phase shifted offset from the nearest load current. In fact, this is a great way of checking our calculations, or yielding correct results quickly as possible. It's perhaps worth a moment of our time to briefly examine some of the details about line current. You'll recall phasor equivalents are simply shorthand representations for time variant sinusoidal expressions. This is where it's helpful to remind ourselves what a phasor really represents. Plotted as a function of time, sinusoidal voltage and current through the individual load impedances would look something like this. Note each load current in this balanced delta configuration has the same magnitude and lags voltage by a relative 20 degrees. Really the only thing that differentiates the load currents is that they're shifted by a relative 120 degrees. These plots of load current assume direction of travel as A to B, B to C and C to A. Line current, however, is the summation of an incoming and outgoing path. Consider line current in line 1, where assumed direction of travel is left to right. Line 1 current is the summation of IAB going left to right and ICA going right to left. Given the assumed direction of travel for I1, this means ICA is flip-flopped. When IAB and the flipped ICA are superimposed upon one another, the summation of instantaneous values in black does indeed appear to yield a sine wave with a larger magnitude exhibiting a phase shifted offset. If we did the same for line current 2 and 3, we would obtain similar results where the summation of instantaneous incoming and outgoing currents does indeed yield sinusoidal oscillating current with a magnitude 1.73 times that of the nearest load current, including a 30 degree phase shifted offset. Again, a phasor equivalent is only a shorthand representation of time variant sinusoidal phenomenon that simply makes the process of calculation and algebraic manipulation that much easier. Let's now examine total apparent, total real, and total reactive power for this complete circuit. There's a couple methods of doing so, but perhaps the easiest means is to solve for total real and total reactive power first. Total real power equals the summation of individual real powers. Summating our given values gives a total real power figure of approximately 304.9 watts. 
Note, for this balanced delta configuration, we could have multiplied one of the leg real power figures by three because they're identical. This would not be true for an unbalanced delta configuration. Similarly, total reactive power for this system equals the summation of individual reactive powers. Substituting our given values yields a total reactive power figure of approximately 111 bars. Again, for this balanced delta configuration, we could have multiplied one of the leg reactive power figures by three because they're identical. This would not be true for an unbalanced delta configuration. Given the total real and total reactive power, we can package these as the real and imaginary components of a rectangular number, 304.9 plus J111, and then convert it to polar form as 324.5 volt amperes, which yields our total apparent power figure. Two, easy. In summary, each impedance element in a balanced delta configuration experiences the larger line-to-line -line voltage. Each load impedance inside a balanced delta configuration experiences load current that is proportional to an Ohm's law manipulation of voltage and impedance. Each line current is a summation of an incoming and outgoing path, where each line current magnitude is square root 3, or 1.73 times the nearest load current magnitude, and exhibits a 30 degree phase shift from the nearest load current. Total apparent, total real, and total reactive power is a summation of individual apparent, real, and reactive power figures. These are the most fundamental aspects of balanced delta configurations. Moving on, consider the less than earth shaking implications of an unbalanced delta configuration. Consider the alteration of load impedance ZAB to 500 ohms at an angle of 50 degrees. Load impedance ZBC and ZCA remain 400 ohms at 20 degrees as previously. Consider voltage distribution within the unbalanced delta. Voltage across load impedance ZAB remains 208 volts at an angle of 0 degrees. The voltage across load impedance ZBC remains 208 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees. The voltage across load impedance ZCA remains 208 volts at an angle of 120 degrees. Given the impedance and voltage across ZBC and ZCA remain unaffected, current drawn by and power experienced by ZBC and ZCA remain unaffected. Therefore, our previous calculations for ZBC and ZCA remain unaffected. Current through ZBC will still be 520 milliampers at an angle of negative 140 degrees, and ZBC will experience 108.2 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 101.6 watts is directed towards real power, and approximately 37 VARs is directed towards a reactive interchange. Similarly, current through ZCA will be 520 milliampers at an angle of 100 degrees, and ZCA will experience 108.2 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 101.6 watts is directed towards real power, and approximately 37 VARs is directed towards a reactive interchange. Really, only load impedance ZAB, our principal source of imbalance, experiences any change in state inside the unbalanced delta. An application of Ohm's law for load impedance ZAB demonstrates current through it will be 416 milliampers at an angle of negative 50 degrees. A phasor diagram illustrates current lags voltage by a relative 50 degrees. Application of the AC power formula demonstrates load impedance ZAB experiences 86.5 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 55.6 watts is directed towards real power and approximately 66.3 VARs is directed towards a reactive interchange. Outside of the unbalanced delta, line currents are also similarly affected. We incorporate ammeters in the following fashion. Current IAB travels through the ammeter on line 1 left to right, into node A, through load impedance ZAB from A to B, out of node B, and through the ammeter on line 2 right to left. Similarly, current IBC travels through the ammeter on line 2 left to right, into node B, through load impedance ZBC from B to C, out of node C, and through the ammeter on line 3 right to left. Finally, current ICA travels through the ammeter on line 3 left to right, into node C, through load impedance ZCA from C to A, out of node A, and through the ammeter on line 1 right to left. Given these assumed directions of current travel, it can be said current in line 1 equals IAB minus ICA. Current in line 2 equals IBC minus IAB. And finally, current in line 3 equals ICA minus IBC. Substituting in our previously calculated values, yields I1 to be 904.5 milliampers at an angle of negative 66.7 degrees. I2 is 665.9 milliampers at an angle of negative 178.7 degrees. And I3 is 900.7 milliampers at an angle of 70 degrees. Note how the unbalanced delta featuring a single unbalanced element affected two line currents. 
This is to be anticipated given line current and delta configurations as the summation of an outgoing and incoming path. If a single load current changes, it affects an outgoing current on one line and an incoming current on another. Being an unbalanced delta configuration or shortcuts regarding the relationship of line and load current and duplication of individual power figures to yield total power are no longer valid. This being said, total apparent, total real, and total reactive power is still the summation of individual apparent, real, and reactive powers. Total real power equals the summation of individual real powers. Substituting in our given values gives a total real power figure of approximately 258.9 watts. Again, note because this is an unbalanced delta configuration, we can't multiply one of the leg real power figures by three because they're no longer identical. Similarly, total reactive power for the system equals the summation of individual reactive powers. Substituting our given values yields a total reactive power figure of approximately 140.3 vars. Again, note because this is an unbalanced delta configuration, we can't multiply one of the leg reactive power figures by three because they're no longer identical. Given the total real and total reactive power, we can now package these as the real and imaginary components of a rectangular number, 258.9 plus J 140.3, and then convert it to polar form as 294.5 volt amperes, which yields our total apparent power figure. Again, note how the unbalanced delta of featuring a single unbalanced element affected two line currents. This is to be anticipated given line current and delta configurations is the summation of an outgoing and incoming path. If a single load current changes, it affects the outgoing current on one line and incoming current on the other. This being said, the analysis of unbalanced delta configurations is relatively easy if you just stay organized and realize this simple fact. Voltage across delta configure loads remains unaffected. Current through an individual load is still a function of impedance in that particular leg, and line current is the summation of an outgoing and incoming path. Total apparent Total real and total reactive power is still the summation of individual apparent real and reactive power figures. Let's try a pair of illustrated example problems to close out this lecture. First, consider a balanced delta configured load in a 480 volt 60 hertz three phase AC system where each leg impedance is modeled as being 320 ohms at an angle of 25 degrees. Solve for the current through each load, the apparent real and reactive power experienced by each load the current in each line, and the total apparent, real, and reactive power experienced by the complete system. Next, consider an unbalanced delta configured load in a 480 volt 60 hertz three phase AC system where impedance ZBC has been changed to 200 ohms at an angle of 45 degrees. Impedance ZAB and ZCA remain 320 ohms at an angle of 25 degrees. Solve for the current through each load, the apparent, real, and reactive power experienced by each load the current in each line, and the total apparent, real, and reactive power experienced by the complete system. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Let's examine the balanced delta configuration first. First, consider voltage distribution within the balanced delta. Voltage across load impedance ZAB is 480 volts at an angle of zero degrees. Voltage across load impedance ZBC is 480 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees, and the voltage across load impedance ZCA is 480 volts at an angle of 120 degrees. An application of Ohm's law for load impedance ZAB demonstrates current through it will be 1.5 amps at an angle of negative 25 degrees. A phasor diagram illustrates current lags voltage by a relative 25 degrees. Application of the AC power formula demonstrates load impedance ZAB experiences 720 volt amperes of apparent power of which 652.5 watts is directed towards real power and 304.3 vars is directed towards a reactive interchange. Stop right here. Put your calculator away. It's a balanced delta. Don't repeat these same calculations. Just write down the same answers and appropriately phase shift the response. Current through load impedance ZBC will also be 1.5 amps, only it's phase shifted by negative 145 degrees. ZBC also experiences 720 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 652.5 watts is directed towards real power, and approximately 304.3 vars is directed towards a reactive interchange. Similarly, current through ZCA will also be 1.5 amps, only it's phase shifted by 95 degrees. Load impedance ZCA also experiences 720 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 652.5 watts is directed towards real power, and approximately 304.3 vars is directed towards a reactive interchange. 
Let's now take a look at line current. Given this is a balanced delta configuration, we can say each line current magnitude is square root 3, or approximately 1.73 times as large as the nearest load current magnitude, and offset by 30 degrees. Using this shortcut, I1 is roughly 2.6 amps at an angle of negative 55 degrees. Similarly, I2 is also roughly 2.6 amps, only it's phase shifted by negative 175 degrees. And finally, I3 is also roughly 2.6 amps, only it's phase shifted by 65 degrees. If this shortcut seems too easy for you, you can always perform the summation of outgoing and incoming current paths to arrive at the same results. Let's now examine total apparent, total real, and total reactive power for this complete circuit. Given each leg of the balance delta is identical, total real power equals an individual real power figure times 3. Substituting in our given values yields a total real power figure of 1957.6 watts, or roughly 2 kilowatts. Similarly, given each leg of the balance delta is identical, total reactive power equals an individual reactive power figure times 3. Substituting our given values yields a total reactive power figure of approximately 912.9 VARs, just a little shy of a full kilovar. Given these total real and total reactive power figures, we can package these as the real and imaginary components of a rectangular number, 1957.6 plus J 912.9, and then convert it to polar form as 2160 volt amperes, or roughly 2.2 kilovolt amperes, which yields our total apparent power figure. Two, easy. In summary, balanced delta configurations allow us to take some serious shortcuts. Not so in unbalanced delta configurations. This being said, as long as you remain organized, correct results are well within your reach. Consider the alteration of load impedance ZBC to 200 ohms at an angle of 45 degrees. Load impedance ZAB and ZCA remain 320 ohms at an angle of 25 degrees as previously. We might expect current and power for ZBC to differ, as well as line currents on lines 2 and 3 to change. Again, first consider voltage distribution within this unbalanced delta. The voltage across load impedance ZAB remains 480 volts at an angle of 0 degrees. The voltage across load impedance ZBC remains 480 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees. And the voltage across load impedance ZCA remains 480 volts at an angle of 120 degrees. Given the impedance and voltage across ZAB and ZCA remain unaffected, current drawn by and power experienced by ZAB and ZCA remain unaffected. Our previous calculations suggested current through ZAB will be 1.5 amps at an angle of negative 25 degrees, and ZAB will experience 720 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 652.5 watts is directed towards real power, and 304.3 VARs is directed towards a reactive interchange. Similarly, current through ZCA will be 1.5 amps at an angle of 95 degrees, and ZCA will experience 720 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 652.5 watts is directed towards real power, and 304.3 VARs is directed towards a reactive interchange. Really, only load ZBC, our principal source of imbalance, experiences any change in state inside the unbalanced delta. An application of Ohm's law for load impedance ZBC demonstrates current through it will be 2.4 amps at an angle of negative 165 degrees. The phasor diagram illustrates current lags voltage by a relative 45 degrees. Application of the AC power formula demonstrates load impedance ZAB experiences 1,152 volt amperes of apparent power, of which 814.6 watts is directed towards real power and 814.6 VARs is directed towards a reactive interchange. Outside of the unbalanced delta, line currents are also similarly affected. If we incorporate ammeters in our circuit in the following fashion, current IAB travels through the ammeter on line 1 left to right into node A through load impedance CAB from A to B, out of node B, and through the ammeter on line 2 right to left. Similarly, current IBC travels through the ammeter on line 2 left to right into node B through load impedance ZBC from B to C out of node C and through the ammeter on line 3, right to left. Finally, current ICA travels through the ammeter on line 3, left to right, into node C, through load impedance ZCA from C to A, out of node A, and through the ammeter on line 1, right to left. Given these assumed directions of travel, it can be said current on line 1 equals IAB minus ICA. Current on line 2 equals IBC minus IAB. And finally, current on line 3 equals ICA minus IBC. Substituting at our previously calculated values 
yields I1 to be 2.6 amps at an angle of negative 55 degrees. I2 is 3.7 amps at an angle of 179.8 degrees. And finally, I3 is 3 amps at 44 degrees. Note how the unbalanced delta featuring a single unbalanced element between nodes B and C affected line current 2 and 3. This is to be anticipated given line current and delta configurations is a summation of an outgoing and incoming path. If load current changes, it affects an outgoing current on one line and an incoming on another. Additionally note, being an unbalanced delta configuration, our shortcuts regarding the relationship of line and load current and the multiplication of individual power figures to yield total power figures are no longer valid. This being said, total apparent, total real, and total reactive power is still the summation of individual apparent real and reactive powers. Total real power equals the summation of individual real powers. Substituting in our given values yields a total real power figure of approximately 2,119.7 watts. Similarly, total reactive power for this system equals the summation of individual reactive powers. Substituting in our given values yields a total reactive power figure of approximately 1,423.2 vars. Given the total real and total reactive power figures, we can now package these as the real and imaginary components of a rectangular number and then convert it to polar form as 2,553.1 volt amperes, which yields our total apparent power figure. All right, that's about it for today. Quick note, recall every single calculation in this lecture on delta configurations made use of the line to line voltage line one with reference to line two as our point of reference which makes total sense given loads and delta configurations experience the line-to-line -line voltage. If, however, you wanted to make this super hard and unwieldy and reference everything with respect to a line-to-neutral voltage like L1, you'd have to shift everything by a relative 30 degrees. I don't know why you'd want to do this because delta configured loads don't make use of the neutral connection, but this option is available for the hard-headed among you. My advice is to simply reference any system from a voltage it's actually making use of. In conclusion, this lecture examined the analysis of balanced and unbalanced delta configured loads in three phase AC systems. We learned that load impedances in delta configurations experience the line to line voltage, and that line current is the summation of an outgoing and incoming load current. In a balanced delta configuration, line current magnitude is square root 3, or roughly 1.73 times the nearest load current magnitude, and exhibits a relative 30 degree phase shifted offset. In unbalanced configurations, these shortcuts are not true. Total apparent, total real, and total reactive power for a balanced or unbalanced configuration is the summation of individual apparent, individual real, and individual reactive power figures. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well a lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your Lazy Lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.